Good evening, everybody. Good to have each and every one of you with me this evening. Hey, if you're joining with us, go ahead and leave me a comment there in the comment section. Let me know that you're here. I know it is a beautiful day outside, and this is our pre-Easter Saturday evening prayer live. And so join with us tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. for our Easter service. Hope to see you guys there in person at the church, but so glad to have you with me this evening. As always in the studio with me is Senior Pastor Daryl Heider and Beverly Heider. And watching with us online is my sister, Vanessa Heider. So glad to have them with us every week, uh, joining with us both in the studio and in person online. And so I'll tell you what, it is going to be an awesome service tomorrow. Uh, make plans to be with us, 3240 Sharp Road, Adrian, Michigan. 11 a.m. service only for our Easter uh, resurrection service. And I know it's going to be a blessing to you, but, you know, we, we uh, celebrate this day uh, every Easter, but we need to be celebrating this day every day and uh, not just on Easter because it, had it not been for a risen Savior, we would have no hope this evening and no hope of eternal life in a place called heaven. So we need to be thankful to the Lord each and every day for his greatest blessing that he gave us is the life of Jesus Christ and the precious blood that was shed at Calvary so that we could have hope of eternal life. And so if you're joining with me, I know it's beautiful outside. Many of you uh, may be enjoying the weather, uh, but if you're joining with me, go ahead and leave me a comment. Let me know that you are here. Uh, there was a 20-minute interval before we got started, so there was more than enough time for everybody to get logged on. And uh, so let me know that you're here. Leave me a comment. Tonight, we're going to be talking about Near the Cross. <laughs> Note written by Calvin Ray Evans from the sermon, sermon notes of his father, Calvin Evans, from John chapter 19, verses 25 to 27. It says, perhaps you have sung it many times. You may, may have even prayed it more times than you can count. We ponder it each time we partake of the Lord's Supper or communion. The words are simple, but so powerful. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Not just any cross. Our heart longs to be close to the cross of Christ. There is the place where Jesus bled and died for our sins. Why do we reflect on it so often? Why do we preach about it so much? To answer these questions, let's look in the Bible to the record about the death of Jesus on the cross. There were many people there that day for many reasons. The religious leaders wanted to make sure he was dead. The Roman soldiers were there out of duty. The crowds were there out of curiosity. However, in our text, we read about four individuals who stood by the cross that day, and they give us insight to the reasons we need to stay near the cross. Those four individuals were Mary Magdalene, uh, Salome, Mary, and John. This message sets forth on the task to investigate the reasons these people stayed by the cross when the others had forsaken and fled away. First, to Mary Magdalene, the cross was a place of redemption. This precious lady had been bound by seven devils when she met the master. Jesus had cast out the evil spirits and healed her of infirmities, Luke chapter 8 and verse 2. She followed him lovingly and willingly. But the day he died, Mary saw him pay the supreme price for her redemption. She realized for her to be delivered from Satan... He had to be forsaken by God. For her to receive forgiveness, he had to become he had to be made sin. For her to be made rich, he had to become poor. He paid the price that we might live. Now I want you to think about <coughs> that uh sentence up here. It says, uh, she realized for her to be delivered from Satan, he had to be forsaken by God. Now I want you to think about that for a second. We talked about this a little bit last Saturday. Um, that, you know, we may be feeling a lot of things in our life and we may go through a lot of things in our life and each of us do each and every day, but we will never truly know what it's like to be actually alone because no matter whether we're saved or lost, Jesus Christ is still there. And so we'll never have to know what it's like to be truly and honestly alone. And so when Jesus hung on the cross for my sin and yours, and for this uh, paragraph here for Mary Magdalene, in order for her to be delivered from Satan, and for, for in order for all of us to have been delivered from Satan, if we are saved this evening, 
Jesus Christ had to be forsaken by God. And the reason he was forsaken by God is because of our sin that was on him. God the Father couldn't look upon him because of the sin that Jesus Christ had taken, my sin and yours. Now, I want you to think about that tonight. If you're watching this broadcast and you don't know who Jesus Christ is, I want you to just really think about what I just said. When you think, no, I'm not going to follow Jesus. I don't care about Jesus. I don't believe in Jesus. I don't want nothing to do with that. I'm just watching this broadcast maybe to make a joke. <clears throat> well, what I'm going to share with you is not a joke. Jesus Christ cared enough about you to take your sin and be forsaken by his father. You know, there's nothing joking about that. There's nothing funny about that. All of us that may be watching this broadcast that are lost, there's no reason for you to be lost. There's absolutely no legitimate reason for you to stay lost. You say, yeah, but, you know, I'm having all kinds of fun and I don't want to change my life and, and have to do all these things and live by all these rules. Well, whether you want to accept it or not or whether you want to believe it or not, you're still living your life by a set of rules and those rules are what the devil has placed upon your life. You're not living life carefree under your own direction. If you're lost, you're following the devil in what he wants you to do. Think about that for a second. If you think, well, I don't want to live by any rules. Well, you know what? I'd rather live by the rules of God and look forward to eternity in heaven than to live by the rules of the devil and pay an ultimate price and die and go to hell. The Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? See, the devil will promise you a good time. He'll promise you all this stuff that you just think is the greatest stuff in the world. I know because I used to be there. I used to think I was really living. Man, I'm having fun. Truth is, the devil didn't care about me and he doesn't care about you. He wants you to fail. Just like he wanted me to fail. But Jesus Christ doesn't want you to fail. Matter of fact, he cared so much about you that he was willing to be forsaken by his father in taking your sin to your cross that he took for you. Now, you may be thinking, well, I don't put a whole lot of stock in this religious stuff. Well, guess what? I don't put a lot of stock in religion either. But I put my eternity and my very life in the hands of Jesus Christ. And there's a very big difference between Jesus and and religion. You want to laugh about something. Religion is a joke. It always has been. Religion is a separation between man and God, but it doesn't look at it that way. People believe that religion gets them closer to God. It doesn't. Religion gets you further from God and further from the truth. Religion is a fake safety net. There's nothing to it. It'll never save you. The only thing religion will do is send you to hell and you'll think you're going to heaven. Did you get what I just said? Jesus said there's a way that seems right in a man's heart. You know what that is? It's religion. <clears throat> you think you're right. The Bible says in the end is death. What does that mean? It means spiritual death. You can follow religion all you want to. You can pour your money into religion. You'll gain the whole world and you'll lose your soul because you put it in the wrong place. As we read earlier in this passage, the religious leaders, the religious leaders were there that day that Jesus hung on the cross. They weren't there because they cared about him. They were there because they wanted to make sure he was dead. See, Jesus, the entire time of his ministry, the religious leaders of the day didn't believe he was who he said he was. They knew the law inside and out. 
and they missed the Son of God. You know why? Because they followed religion. You put your faith in religion and you're going to fall short every time. I don't care what some church told you. I don't care what some preacher might have told you. Religion will do you no good. Because when you stand before God one day, it's going to let you down. But I can promise you, you put your faith in Jesus Christ and you stand before God one day and you're going to hear, enter in, thou good and faithful servant, into the joys of the Lord. Because the blood of Jesus Christ, there is no equal. No other name given among men by which ye must be saved. And that name is Jesus. Not religion, not Buddha, not Mohammed, not Allah, Jesus. Now you can disagree with me if you want to, and that's your human right. But it does not change the facts that Jesus Christ is, was, and always will be the only way to that place called heaven. And if you're going to get there, you're going to have to go through his cross. There's no other option. Now, you may have heard people say, well, <laughs> if you're a good moral person, you know, you'll make it to heaven. If you, you live by the Ten Commandments, you'll make it to heaven. Let me tell you something, you'll never live by the Ten Commandments. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You can try to be perfect. You can try to do all the right things. But as long as you're in this body, you're going to sin. But when we do, and Paul said this, when we do, we have an advocate with the Father through Christ Jesus the righteous. You confess your sins. And Jesus is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Being a Christian is a 100% commitment to God. Period. There's no other way around that. And so if you're watching this broadcast and you've listened to me tell you what the truth is of God's word, I'm not telling you my opinion. My opinion doesn't mean anything. My opinion is unimportant. My opinion won't get you anywhere near heaven. But God's word will. And that is what I'll always share with you. Because at the end of the day, I'm a sinner saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm trucking the same road that you are. I'm no better. Save Jesus Christ. So let's do it together. Let's get to heaven together. But you're going to need to make that decision to follow Jesus Christ first. I'll pray for you. I'll do all I can to be there for you spiritually. But it's a commitment and a choice that you have to make on your own. And then, here's the best part. Then we can walk that road together. It says, second, to Salome, the cross was a place of rebuke. The Bible makes it clear that she was a glory seeker. You might remember she was the one who made the request to Jesus for her sons, James and John, to sit on the right and the left hand of the throne. Jesus, was, Jesus plainly informed her, that she did not know what kind of sacrifice would be required of her sons. They would have to drink the cup of sorrow and be baptized with the pain that he would endure. To grant them to sit by the throne was right reserved only for God, was a right reserved only for God. Since by the throne, <coughs> since she had asked, they would be required to endure suffering with him. Too many people today want the blessings without the suffering. If we suffer with him, then we shall also reign with him. The present suffering we go through could never compare to the far more exceeding weight of glory awaiting us. Salem remembered her words prior to Calvary, Matthew chapter 20, verses 20 to 24. 
Now she gets a first-hand view of his passion and knows the request she made of Jesus will result in the same sorrow of her sons. Her son James later would become the first martyr for Christ. Her other son John would die on the Isle of Patmos for his love for Christ. And I want you to think about that for a second. There's a lot of prosperity preachers out there. I'm not, no, correct, scratch that. There's a lot of prosperity motivational speakers out there today. I'm not going to call them preachers because they're not one. And you may disagree with me. I don't care. The truth is there's a lot of prosperity motivational speakers that are out to take your money and tell you all the good stuff, make you feel warm and fuzzy on the inside, and allow you to keep living in your sin under the lie and the cloak of what they call the gospel and what they're feeding you is a fake the God that they're sharing with you doesn't exist. And the Jesus that they try to sell you is not the same Jesus that died on the cross. You know why I say that? Because they don't talk about the cross. They don't talk about the blood. They don't talk about any of those things. And you remove those things from your gospel that you call it of Jesus Christ and you're no longer preaching the true Jesus. You're preaching a commercial form of what you want people to buy. And you're preaching them a lie. The prosperity motivational speakers will tell you that God is like a lucky rabbit's foot or a genie in a bottle. That you can have your best life now. Let me tell you something. If this is my best life now, then the only thing I've got to look forward to is a place called hell. <clears throat> this isn't my best life now. And it never will be. Compared to that place called heaven, this life isn't even close. So in the words of their books, if this is my best life now, then I have grossly missed the mark. But they will sell you a whole lot of good things. You can have all of this from God. <clears throat> but they never talk about dying out to your sins, being crucified with Christ. They don't talk about those things. I'm sorry, guys, I don't want a fake gospel and I'll never share a fake one with you because I'll stand before God one day and give an account for what I have shared with you. And if those things don't line up with God's word, I have not only failed God, but I have failed you and I have held your hand and patted you on the back and smiled to your face when the whole time I was leading you to a place called hell. And I was leading myself there too. I told you at the beginning of this, it's not a joke. People's eternities are not a joke. But yet we'll just lap it up, soak it up, buy it up of what those motivational speakers are selling because there's no conviction involved. We can feel good about being wrong. I don't want to feel good about being wrong. I want to know when I'm doing something wrong so I can fix it. That's what I want. I want Jesus Christ to reveal to me the things that I need to change. And let me tell you something. You truly want to have a relationship with God. You're going to have to be crucified with Christ. Just like Paul said. It's no longer I who live, but he who lives in me. Jesus Christ paid a high cost for my life and for yours. Do you honestly think that accepting anything less than the genuine gospel is going to matter? Think about that. You think when you stand before God, you're going to say, God, I, I, I followed what I thought was right. That's not going to matter. Our responsibility is to open God's word and to read it for ourself. I don't ever want you to take my word for it. I want you to open God's word and I want you to read it. And I mean really read it. And know what it says. Because it's going to be the difference between life and death. And I'm not talking about life and death here. I'm talking about spiritual life and spiritual death.
It says, thirdly, to Mary, the mother of Jesus, the cross was a place of reward. She's pictured on many occasions in scriptures with her son. We see her with Jesus at the wedding feast, and it was the, a time of joy. Now we see her at a funeral, and it's the time of sorrow. We hear her speaking in the beginning, but now she is silent. She knew the words of Simon were coming to pass. The sword was piercing her soul as she watched him die that day. They had misunderstood who her son was. Her testimony was solid to the end that Jesus was the Son of God. She saw it all. The way he died among transgressors in a public place and hanging in naked shame. <clears throat> Let me ask you something, Christian. I want to talk to you for a second. We all know the story of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. We know that he hung between two thieves, two transgressors. One of them said to him, if you be who you say you are, get yourself down from this cross and get us down from ours. That was one of them. We'll get back to him in a second. The other one said, remember me when you go into your kingdom. One of them was a person who trusted Jesus was who he said he was. The other one was a Christian. <laughs> now I'm going to explain to you which one is which. Sometimes a Christian complains a little too much when they don't get what they think God should have gave them. Lord, get me down from this issue. I don't like that person. I only pray for people I care about. I'm not going to church because that person irritated me. And the list goes on and on. The other one figured out who Jesus was based upon his heart. He took the time to care. What did Jesus say to him? Jesus didn't even respond to the other one. But he responded to the one with faith. And he said, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. You want to get an answer from God? Show some respect to who he is. Stop barking orders at God and stop barking orders at everybody else. Stop saying you're a Christian and living a life that shows you clearly you're not. And get on our face before God with the reverence that he deserves. Revival hasn't come to the church because the Christians aren't on their face before God showing respect to the son of the living God. Now tomorrow people will come to church. That's their first time this year. <clears throat> and they'll call themselves a Christian. Now here's what's crazy. And I'm going to talk to you about the second about the pandemic. There will be people who will say, I'm not going to church because I'm just not comfortable still being in public, you know. And, and, and I'm not dissing that. So don't, you know, don't get all irritated with what I'm about ready to say. But if you're not coming to church because you don't want to be around people because of the pandemic, but you will go to Walmart, Myers, and out to eat, then your, your, your excuse is just that. It's an excuse based upon what you consider important and what you consider not to be as much important or as important. If you can go everywhere but the church house and you use COVID-19 as the reason, I'm sorry to tell you, you're full of it. Okay? I'm just going to be honest with you. That's about as clear as I can put it. Church isn't a, isn't a necessity to you. It's not essential, I guess. But whatever. That's your decision. That's on you. But we come to church once a year, and then we say, oh, how I love Jesus. <laughs> That's the funniest joke I've heard all year. 
Guys, come on, man. I'm like, if Jesus can take our cross and our sin upon himself, have his father turn his back on him and bleed and die for our sins, and yet all we can do is go to church one day a year. Well, correction, two days a year, Christmas and Easter. That is sad. I mean, come on, man. <clears throat> oh, I, I pray every day. I sure hope so. And I hope that prayer starts out with, God, please forgive me for being lazy. I really hope that's where it starts. Now, if you have physical issues where you can't get to church, I'm not talking about that. If you have health issues, you can't get to church. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about somebody who goes and does everything they want to do and then makes excuses about going to church, but still calls themselves a Christian. That's what I'm talking about. If you have health issues, that's understandable. If you have physical issues that keep you from being able to do that, I completely understand that. And so does God. But if you can go and do all kinds of other stuff, except go to church, and you grace the church pew with your backside two days a week, or two days a week. Now, that would be unbelievable. But two times a year, then you need to pray and ask God to forgive you for being the way you are. But that's between you and God, and, and that's as far as I'm going to go with it. <clears throat> but Jesus Christ has done so much for us. And if we are going to get a response from God, we're going to have to do what the one thief did and say, remember me when you go into your kingdom. We're going to have to have that kind of belief, faith, reverence, and commitment to God that he had. Now remember, God didn't respond, Jesus didn't respond to the other transgressor. But guess what? He was hanging there and dying for him. He didn't respond to him, but his blood was being shed for him even though he didn't care. Think about that for a second. We won't walk across the street and talk to somebody that we disagree with. Jesus Christ died for someone that didn't care about him. Christian, let's put our petty differences aside. Let's lay down that junk and let's legitimately care about people. This world's going to hell in a handbasket and the Christians are okay with that because I don't like those people. I'm sure, I'm sure thankful beyond anything I can ever say to Jesus Christ that he died for me and did not have the same view that many Christians do today. Because if he had, we'd all be sunk. None of us were worth dying for. Not a one of us. That's just, that's truth. I was not worth the blood of Jesus. I wasn't. <clears throat> I'm still not worth what Jesus Christ has given me. But I am the most extremely thankful person to have it. We need to show God a whole lot more than we have been. And you know what? We'll start to hear from God. We'll start to see God show up in things. You know what? Tomorrow morning, my prayer is, is that the Holy Spirit will fall upon the church house. That people, if they come in lost, won't be able to stay lost. People that come in sick or afflicted won't stay that way. That there will be a changing in the church house tomorrow all across this land. But that the Holy Spirit will light us Christians on fire and that we won't ever be the same. This world needs Christians like that, and there's very few of them that are available. I pray that God lights me on fire. 
spiritually slaps me around a little bit to get my attention on the things that I need to focus on. So we can be used by God. We have to understand what God gave us. It says, all of this seemed to be more than any mother could bear, but suddenly everything changed. Her son Jesus spoke, and his words brought her great peace. In the hour of death, he rewarded her. He looks to John and says, behold thy mother. He had no earthly possessions to will, but in the hour of death, he spoke his last will and testament for his mother. He gave her John. She would be provided for and cared for the remaining days of her life. In the midst of all the ridicule, suffering, and slander, he turned the wretchedness of the hour into a day of reward. The longest will and testament on record contained 95,940 words. The shortest will ever written contained only three words. You read it right. Only three little words. The will simply stated, All for mother. Jesus provided for his mother at the cross. Even today, as horrible as the cross was, it became a place of reward for all of us. Lastly, to John, the cross was a place of responsibility. Now, I want you to listen to this. He rewarded his mother, but placed John accountable for her. Think about this. Jesus was literally allowing John to take his place concerning the care of his mother. If John had not been near the cross, then he would never have received this responsibility. The Lord trusted John because he was near the cross. Where were the multitudes whose lives he had changed? Where were the blind, crippled, deaf, and sick who he had healed? Where were the thousands that he had fed when they were hungry? Where were the other disciples? John loved him so much that he did not want him to die alone. He was among the four who made sure Jesus knew they were near the cross. For that reason, Jesus trusted him with his great responsibility. Today, there are so many who take the blessings he offers, but are not willing to stand by the cross. They have no concern for the fact that Jesus was dying for their sin. He was dying alone. He made the earth, but it had no room for him. He made the rock, and it was the tomb for him. He made the steel, which pierced the heart of him. He embraced thorns, which became a part of him. Or he embedded thorns, which became a part of him. He gave... The, beareth, the breath to the mob which jeered at him. He molded the shape of the faces which feared him. Yet never a tear did the multitude shed for him, though the sin of us all lay heavy on him. He called to God, and the Father turned his face from him. He died alone, O oh marvelous grace, of him. Now, I can't tell you who wrote that because it says anonymous. How about you today? Do you know he died for you? Some of you might be like the one thief who cried, Lord, remember me. Some may be like the disciples who ran. You've gone away, and now it's time to return to him. You may be like the centurion and now realize that truly he was the Son of God. Don't be among the crowd that passed by that day at Calvary. Right now, make this your prayer, Jesus Keep me near the cross. You know, when it said here, the centurion, don't be like him. When he said, truly, he was the son of God. Let me tell you something. Don't wait until you meet Jesus. We talked about this last Saturday. Don't wait until you meet Jesus on judgment day and say, surely he was who he said he was. It'd be too late then. Guys, we need to understand. Think about this from John. He was there at the cross because he didn't want Jesus to die alone. And if you're a Christian bought by the blood of Jesus, you don't have to fear dying alone. Because you won't. I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. 
I'll go with you even unto the ends of the earth. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Now I want you to think about the part in the 23rd Psalm that says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. You'll never walk alone. You'll never feel what Jesus felt. Why? Because Jesus was willing to take that for you. Now there is no good reason to treat people. I don't care how they've treated you. There is no reason to disrespect people. Jesus Christ loved you when you were lost. And he loved me when I was lost. We have no excuse to name call, disrespect, overlook, not pray for, not care about, not witness to anyone. And if you say, if you disagree with that, shame on you. Shame on you if you disagree with that. I don't care who you are. Shame on you. Jesus Christ deserves better than that. And it's a shame you won't give it to him. But you know what? I'll let you answer that to him. I'm just going to tell you. That's some junk and you know it. Plain and simple. But here's the thing. We're going to celebrate Resurrection Day tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. In a special church service. But as Christians, we need to be celebrating Resurrection Day Every day. In our worship. Every day. See a lot of people think they go to church to worship God. No you're worshiping God is your everyday life. Reflects your worship to God. Now my prayer is this. Is that Jesus Christ will bring us near the cross. Wake us up. To what really happened there. And tomorrow morning, we're going we're gonna to go into detail at what happened there. It's going to be the greatest service you've ever been to. Because we're going to share you with you what Jesus Christ did for you. Christian and lost. We're going to talk about what Jesus did. We're going to visually show you what Jesus did. And if you're lost, I'm hoping it'll bring you to a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you're a Christian, I hope it wakes you up like never before. We're going to celebrate Resurrection Day. But we're going to spend some time at Calvary first. Because that's where it all began. That was the day that opened up the opportunity for me to be saved. And for you to be saved. Near the cross. There's no other place on earth that compares to it. I hope you'll join us tomorrow morning at 11 a.m., 3240 Sharp Road in Adrian, Michigan. You take Treat Highway, past Madison School. You'll also uh, cross uh, Carleton. And you'll go down there to where you have Woodlawn Golf Course on the right-hand side. Sharp Road only goes to the left. Uh, We're about a mile up on the hill, left-hand side of the road, 3240 Sharp Road. Come and be with us 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. And I know it'll be a blessing to you. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are as well. I want to say hi to a few people that's joined in with us. Hey, Sister Bobby, good to have you with us. I hope you are doing well. Hey, Sister Teresa and Brother Bob, hugs to you guys. God bless you guys. Happy Easter to you as well. I hope you guys are doing well. Hope Brother Bob is doing a lot better. Just know we've been praying for all of you. Uh, Sister Bobby as well. Hey, Aunt Joy and Uncle Jim, good to have you guys with us. I pray that you're having a wonderful Wonderful afternoon and evening, wonderful day 
it has been beautiful. I hear tomorrow is going to be somewhere near 70 or 65 or whatever it is. It's uh, <laughs> compared to the other day when it was snowing. It's awesome that it's <laughs> that it's gotten so, so beautiful outside. I'm thankful to the Lord for his many blessings and all that he has given. Guys, let me tell you something. We need to be thankful to every day for what God has done for us. Thankful to every day for the many, 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 many blessings that Jesus Christ has given has blessed us with the opportunities that he has given us. And, and I'll tell you what, I'm so thankful to, to serve a risen Savior. And uh, I'm looking forward to church tomorrow. I look forward to church every week. And uh, I hope you are as well. Come and be with us. Uh, you know, you can rest assured that uh, coming to church tomorrow, you can wear a mask. All of us do. When we're in church, we still ask that you do that. Um, there's hand sanitizer in the church. I mean, we've taken all the precautions necessary according to state and federal guidelines to make sure that you can come to church and you can feel safe and comfortable in doing so. And, uh, another thing I want us to pray about guys is, uh, the people getting killed in everyday life when they just, they're going to a store, they're going to, to sadly going to church and you've got people, I'm, I'm sorry to say it, they, they're, they have issues, and I, you know, and they're just out to just do whatever they can to their fellow human beings. It's the saddest thing in the world to see. People who was just planning on going to the grocery store, or planning on going to school, or going to church, or wherever they may go, and little did they know that was the day that their life was going to come to an end at the hands of someone that didn't care about them. Didn't even know them, but didn't care about them. Let's pray for our communities. Let's pray, pray for our neighbors. You know, I remember a time when we used to be able to disagree, but we still cared about each other. Sadly, I don't think that time exists anymore. If you disagree with somebody, you're called a bigot. I don't get that. But you know what? I'm going to continue sharing Jesus Christ. I'm going to continue loving everybody. I'm going to try to love people like Jesus Christ loves them. You know, in John, I believe it's 15, 13, it says, Hath no man greater love than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. We need to love people. You say, yeah, but there's some people, they just won't let you love them. Pray for them and love them anyway. Because let me tell you something, at the end of the day, they need Jesus Christ. It's the most important thing. Let's love them. Let's pray for them. Let's do what we can to be there for one another, to help one another, guys. There's enough separation and discourse and, and disrespect in this world. Let's be different. Let's love people like Jesus Christ loved us. And I can promise you, you will see some changes. I'm going to share some things tomorrow in service as well that's going to brighten your day, that's going to lift you up and show you that you know what? Jesus Christ still is saving people. And so I'm looking forward to that. Guys, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer right now, thanking Him for all that He has done and everything that He is going to do. And just hold on one second. Let me... Uh... Hello, hello, hello. Hi. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to call and say that I tell you what, I love God. I love God so much. And I just want to say to everyone that is listening to this broadcast or may hear it down the road or whenever they do hear this, my name is Vanessa Heider, and I am a Christian, and I love God, and I just want to say Happy Easter to everyone. And I tell you what, my life is so good, and my life is so happy, and I love, I love my family, and just know that I love each and every one of you. I may not know you, but I love you, and that's the absolute truth. So Happy Easter to everyone. 
Bye bye. Bye bye. Hey, let me tell you something. That right there. I mean, let me tell you something. If you have watched uh, these broadcasts at all, um, or if you've been to our church, you know who my sister is. And and I'll be honest with you, what she says is the truth. When she says that she loves you, she absolutely does. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. No, uh, you know, no hidden agenda. No, uh, you know, strings attached. Nothing like that. When she says she loves you, she does. Even if she don't know you, you can rest assured that she's praying for you. You say, yeah, well, how could she do that? She doesn't know me. Because she prays for everybody. She prays that the Lord will bless our world on a daily basis. And so rest assured when she says she loves you and she's praying for you, she absolutely does. Hey, Sister Bobby. Uh, hey, Nessa, she said uh, happy Easter to you as well. Sister Bobby did. Hey, Sister Bev Varney, good to have you with us. Says thanking God for the shed blood for me. Absolutely. <laughs> and we all need to be thankful for the shed blood of Jesus Christ because without that precious blood, we would have no hope. I got to have a drink of Mountain Dew. I got a slightly smaller cup, and uh, which is, you know, a little smaller than my usual 52 ounces of high-octane stuff. And so, you know, that'll get your motor running better than coffee. And I know there's a lot of people drink coffee. Uh, one of them is in the studio. <laughs> and uh, But Mountain Dew is better, if you ask me. I'm not going to look over there at him because I know he would disagree with me. So I'm just going to look straight forward and uh, just pretend that he he's agreeing. And so... See, if I pretend he's agreeing, then I, I'm not technically lying because I haven't looked to notice the truth. So, but anyway, uh, <laughs> that's the joke for today. Uh, but uh, yeah, when she says that she loves you and she's praying for you, she absolutely is. And so I'm so thankful for my sister and all that she does to spread the message of Jesus Christ. And she does, guys. She's not able to get out. She's not able to walk much. Uh, she has to spend a lot of her time in bed. Uh, but I can guarantee you she is spreading the message of Jesus Christ all around this world through the mail. And so she is. She is uh, uh, partnered uh, in, in one of the partners in sending money to make sure Bibles are sent all over the world. And so she does that and she gets involved with a lot of different organizations that share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we have no excuse about not sharing the gospel when her, and I know she won't mind me using this, when she is able to do it from her bed and not able to walk. We have no excuse, guys. We have so many things at our fingertips that we can share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it may be. Uh, calling people on the phone, sending cards, sending letters, uh, talking to you know people in our own families, talking to people at the grocery store. You say, yeah, but you know you got to be careful. Hey, you can spread the message of Jesus Christ from six feet with a mask on. So there are no excuses about what we can do for the Lord. It's just we choose to take the safe and easy route of not doing it or making excuses. And so let's continue to share the message of Jesus Christ. Let's do it with joy. Let's do it with love. Let's do it with excitement because Jesus Christ not only died for us, but he rose again the third day, ascended back to the Father, and praise God one day he's coming back for those that love and serve him. And I'm looking forward to that. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. And let's believe in our heart that what we're asking God for, that he is going to answer and he is hearing our prayers this evening as we pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, dear God, we're thankful, dear Jesus, again, for another wonderful day that we can gather together here on Facebook and lift up the needs of one another, dear Jesus. I pray that... You will be with the many, dear God, who are uh, uh, facing health issues and health concerns and health scares, dear God. I pray that you will bring healing to their life, dear God, that you will touch them right now in the name of Jesus Christ and that healing has already begun. I pray for my Uncle David, dear Jesus. You know the cancer and where it is, dear God, and what he is facing and the chemo that he has had to endure. The doctors say it's the strongest that they can give him. But dear God, the strongest thing that we can give him is the Holy Spirit of Almighty God that can go and do what we cannot do and what medicine can only dream of. The Holy Spirit can change in an instant. And I'm praying right now, dear God, that you will go where my Uncle David is, that you will touch him, dear God, from on high. 
And that we are claiming the blood of Jesus Christ right now over the cancer that has infected his body. Because nothing is impossible with you. And I pray, dear God, that you'll be with our frontline workers, doctors and nurses and hospital staff, nursing home staff. That you'll bless them, dear God, strengthen them every day and help them to be able to continue to do what they do for their communities and those in need. I pray, dear God, that tomorrow in church, I'm praying, dear God, that we won't have church as usual. I pray that your Holy Spirit, dear God, will come through the doors and will shake up the church like it's never been shaken before. I pray, dear God, that you will grab a hold of us as Christians and open our eyes to what has truly been done for us, dear Jesus. And I pray that when we leave the church house tomorrow, that we will leave different than we came in. and That we will never be the same. That you'll take us to Calvary, dear Jesus. And that you'll show us what was done so we could be saved today. I pray, dear God, that there be one there that doesn't know you. And I pray that there will be those there tomorrow in need of Jesus Christ. I pray, dear God, from the bottom of my heart that the lost will be in church tomorrow. And I pray, dear God, that you'll convict them, that you'll, you'll, you'll draw them to be near the cross, but more importantly, dear God, that the Christians that sit within the four walls of the church house will be near the cross as well, and that we will see change begin to happen, dear God, in the hearts and minds of those in attendance. I pray, dear God, for an anointing like we've never had before. Because one day I want to stand before you and I want to hear, Enter in, thou good and faithful servant, into the joys of the Lord. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for what this weekend means. But I thank you every day of my life that you allowed me to be saved at all. Thank you for all that you've done for me. If you don't give me another blessing the rest of my life, you've done enough. And far greater than I've ever deserved. Be with us, dear God, in everywhere that we go, everything that we do, that we will always lift high the banner of Jesus Christ. Thank you again. And we will forever praise you, worship you, and love you. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray, and everybody said, Amen. I want to thank you for being with me this evening. I pray that this service has been a blessing to you. It has absolutely been a blessing to me and an honor to be able to spend it with each and every one of you. Join us tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. in person, 3240 Sharp Road in Adrian, Michigan. Also, if you're unable to be with us for whatever reason, at 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon and every Sunday afternoon, we will broadcast the service that was recorded in-house earlier in the day right here on Facebook at 3 p.m. So make plans to join us either in-house or right here on Facebook. And I know it'll be a blessing to you. I love you guys. On behalf of my dad, Beverly, my sister watching, all of us at the Adrian First Free Will Baptist Church, we love you. We're praying for you always. Happy Easter to each and every one of you. You guys are awesome. Just wanted to tell you that. Thank you for all that you do for the church, all that you do for this broadcast, all that you do first and foremost, for Jesus Christ. I thank you so much for all of that. Hey, Sister Bev, you're very welcome. You are very welcome. I find it a joy and an honor and a privilege to be able to share the message of Jesus Christ. I find nothing greater in this life than to be able to stand up for the Savior that stood up for me. God bless you guys. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow morning. If not, I'll see you in that beautiful place called heaven. Until then, have a great rest of your afternoon. Enjoy this beautiful weather and this nice sunshine. May the Lord richly bless you. Until tomorrow. Love you guys. Take care of yourself. Let's take care of each other.